to the show. We're back at Fairview Park Hospital, and today I have Dr. John Polhill with me on the show. Dr. Polhill, thank you for joining us. Glad to be here. We've got a really cool topic today. Uh, we're going to talk about robotic surgery, but I know there's a, a little more proper name for that, so if you would, take just a minute and uh, tell us sure. a little bit. Well, I'll tell you what, before we do that, tell us a little bit about you. A little bit about me. Well, I've, um, I grew up in Georgia, grew up in Thomasville, we went to the uh, University of Georgia, then Medical College of Georgia, went to Charlotte, North Carolina for surgery residency, then did one year fellowship and minimal access surgery, and then moved here, which is my wife's hometown, and this summer will be about 10 years. Okay, now are you from Augusta? I'm from Thomasville. Thomasville, you said that. And then okay. we have four boys, ages five through 12. Five through 12, so never a dull moment no, at home. No, no sir. So robotic surgery, is that something when you started into the medical field and, and through school you thought you would be doing one day? Not really. It was just coming out at the very end of my residency. And when it started, uh, it was primarily used in urology and cardiac surgery. So I did not get exposed to it during my residency or fellowship. Okay. So this is one of those things that's kind of come along after training and I've had to go back and do training that's good specifically for oh, this. Yes. <laughs> yes. We're glad to know so it's, that. So it's, um, people call it the robot. It's, it's called the Da Vinci robot made by a company called Intuitive Surgical. And it's a very sophisticated machine that has some really neat technology. Okay, and what different procedures do you guys perform? It's really the same procedures, but just a different technique. So the most common surgeries I would perform with it would be a cholecystectomy, which is removing the gallbladder, uh, do all types of hernia surgeries, inguinal hernias, incisional hernias, uh, hernias of the abdominal wall. Um, also do anti-reflux surgery, people that have bad heartburn. Um, then there, we have a colorectal surgeon here that, that can do colo, uh, colon resections. And they're, the, for what I use it for is mainly gallbladder removals, hernias, and um, the Nissen fundoplication or the anti-reflux surgery. Okay. Now, how would you determine, Dr. Polhill, if someone, um, is, is there someone who's a better candidate for the Da Vinci product or the robotic surgery versus a traditional surgery? It's very similar to the indications for laparoscopy, which are the smaller incisions. So there, most everybody would be a candidate for it. There aren't very many reasons that people would not be. Okay. And as far as insurance coverage and things it's, like it's that? The it's same. the same. Insurance recognizes it as a laparoscopic procedure. There's not, at least at this point, there's not a separate billing code. Okay. Um, recovery. I'm sure that, that our viewers would like to know if they, they have this type of procedure. Let's talk a little bit about recovery times and... It's, healing process. it's very similar to laparoscopy with the small incisions, which is much better than traditional open surgery. There's less pain, less problems with wounds, which be mainly infections or hernia formations. Anytime you have a large incision, there's a risk, or any incision really, there's a risk of subsequent hernia formation. That's just a natural weak spot in your abdominal wall when you've had an incision. So when we can minimize the length of those incisions, the, uh, the risk of subsequent hernia formation is less. Well, so, I want to give you a, a little testimony here on the camera, and I'm not 100% sure if mine was, was robotic or not, but I, I had the um, gallbladder removal um, in the last three years, and, and I don't know, I didn't ask if they were doing it robotic or, or how they were doing it, but I can tell you, um, and it may sound strange, I don't know how everyone else heals, but two weeks after I had mine, I was able to play in a golf tournament. Right. Um, I went home that same morning after having the procedure, um, and, and things just seemed to go really well with it. So, um, yeah, there's a significant improvement in pain and quicker recovery with the smaller incisions. Specific to lapar to gallbladder removal with the robot, something that that I can do with the robot that I can't do with traditional laparoscop laparoscopic surgery is um, I can remove it through one incision at the navel with about a two and a half centimeter incision. Let's do it, it's called a single port uh, cholecystectomy. Okay, and, and tell me a little bit, and that's probably, is that one of the more common surgeries? That is, that is definitely one of the more common um, surgeries. I have that little scar and I've got two other little tiny scars. 
What what were those two? Well, one you was probably, a light, I think, or something. You probably something. actually have three other. We may just not be able to okay. see. Okay, and all three yeah. or four. Yeah. They're really small. <laughs> so with traditional laparoscopic cholecystectomy, you'd have a camera at the umbilicus or belly button, and then three other ports at the right subcostal margin, and those are used for an assist port. Or you have an assistant do the retracting the gallbladder, and then the other two would be the surgeon's right and left hand working instruments. Okay. We, I got a lot of cool questions I want to ask you about this. We're going to take a real quick commercial break and then we'll come right back. Okay. Portions of this program are brought to you in part by Fairview Park Hospital, a leader in healthcare for Dublin, Lawrence, and surrounding communities. Providing community healthcare services, including 24 hour emergency room. Hey, welcome back. Um, right before we went to our commercial break, we were talking about the actual surgery. And you mentioned the right and the left hand. And so, so for our viewers, and, and I've seen this actually here at the hospital, but explain um, what this procedure looks like. You're not actually sitting right there with the patient, looking at the patient. You're right, that, that part is a little bit strange for, for doctors to get used to and also for patients. But to begin the surgery is exactly the same as any other surgery. I'm right there on the patient and I make several incisions to put the trocars in. Those are the, the devices that the instruments pass into the patient's abdomen. So there be several trocars. In the case of the gallbladder surgery, there's just one, but normally there would be three to four. And we put, put the trocars in, and then we call it docking the robot. We attach the robotic arms to those trocars, and those, the robotic arms, which are controlled by me at the surgeon console, move the, the trocars in sync with my hand motions. So after the robot is docked, we put the instruments in, and those can be changed in and out. If I need a scissors for one thing, the assistant can remove the scissors and or put the grasper in or a cautery or a sealing device. Can, those can be interchanged. Okay. And it has a, the computer has a memory. So if I remove an instrument, they simply push the the new instrument in and it automatically returns to the previous spot. So that, that's a safety feature that, that helps prevent injuries with the removing and inserting of instruments. Okay. So after the robot's dock, the instrument's in, then I walk away from the patient, you know, 10 feet or so and go sit down at the surgeon, surgeon console. And, and just for comfort for our viewers and so they understand, you did not leave that patient over there by themselves and you're facing in the other direction. There, there are some attendants. There are people, there's a, right there. either an anesthesiologist or an anesthetist that's always there. There's a circulating nurse and then usually two assistants. They're all standing right there. And, and tell me for you as a doctor, um, what you enjoy about this type of procedure versus a traditional procedure. It's uh, the visualization for one is fantastic. It's very high definition. And it's, it's a simulated 3D image. With traditional laparoscopic surgery, there's one camera lens at the end of the instrument. This one actually has two different cameras within one camera tube. And when I sit at the console, my left eye is looking, sees what the left camera sees, and my right eye sees what the right camera sees. So it's a simulated 3D vision. So something that, that may be very, very tiny that you would have had to look it's, at just through, you can magnify that how Right, many it's, times? it's much better than your, your naked vision. So you can, and I can control the camera with, a, with my arms and a foot pedal. And I can zoom in, zoom out, turn left and right. Whereas with traditional laparoscopic surgery, the assistant is, is holding the camera usually, where I would be saying, all right, up a little, down a little, left, right, where this I just control myself. And, and I'll tell you, and it is amazing the, the ease of, of how these arms move and the, um, just so our viewers know, I actually performed surgery on the operation man and I took out the funny bone. There you and, go. Uh, and and it, was, it was relatively easy to do and the, the ease of the controls. So. Yeah, the traditional laparoscopic instruments can, can rotate this way and open and close, whereas the robotic instruments are called wristed, like, your, like a human wrist. They're just a lot more degrees of motion, which makes sewing or suturing much easier. Okay, and I have a, a question here about virtual reality. So are you, is this virtual reality? Uh, I would not describe it as virtual reality. I mean, it's, it's just a very clear image, but my, my motion is, is identically mimicked uh, by the robot. 
And, and people have a mi little bit of a misconception the robot is doing a part of the surgery or it's in autopilot mode, and that's just not, Absolutely not true. Absolutely no part Absolutely of that is not true. true. Everything is, is moved when you decide to move. And, and so does this, this also speed up um, procedure time? Um, that's debatable. Uh, there's a little bit more time up front getting the getting the robot docked and set up and all that, but it definitely facil it makes certain procedures a lot easier for me to do. And, and what and, kind of comments are you hearing? Have you you followed up with any of the patients? And, yeah, I mean, it, it, what what are you hearing from them? Um, generally, it's just compared to open surgery, there's less pain and a quicker recovery. I, I would agree um, because, like I said, I. I wasn't sure what to expect. I went home that day, laid down, had some rest, took it easy for for a day or two, and um, to think you had your gallbladder taken out. I think back years ago that was pretty major. It used surgery. to be a major surgery, yeah, um, and it, yeah. And, and from I think I came in about six o'clock in the morning, and by lunchtime I was at home. So pretty pretty cool on those processes. So how many of these surgeries? Um, and I guess you you perform two or three? Are there other doctors here at the hospital that also do the surgeries? There are. Uh, Dr. Corbin Mullis, ENT surgeon, has okay. done a few surgeries. He can do uh, resections of the tongue base to help with sleep apnea and also uh, tonsillar cancer and tongue base cancer. And Dr. Bill Chisholm, OBGYN physician here, does uh, several procedures, hysterectomies. Um, procedures on the ovaries and that sort of thing. Any idea, ballpark figure, how many of these together you guys have performed? Because I know this surgery, correct me if I'm wrong, it's about a year old in this hospital? Yes. Okay. About uh, how many do you think? Uh, maybe 150-ish, somewhere in that range. And, and for you specifically? Um, almost 100. Okay. So, so you're doing a majority of these. Is, is there a little more common, maybe with the gallbladder or something? Yeah, like that gallbladder right is hernia. There's also um, Dr. Doug Brewer, colorectal surgeon, um, also uses it some. Um, yeah, the most common surgeries would be the gallbladder and hernias. Do you see this expanding into heart procedures and different? Yeah, things they're like they're actually the using future? it for the the future for this. I think is a little bit out there now, but is uh, remote surgery. In other words, if you have somebody that's an absolute expert in a mitral valve replacement, that he could be in St. Louis and they could have an operating team in San Francisco and it could be docked and set up by that team in San Francisco and then that world's expert in St. Louis could have a console wow. and, and do it remotely. That's the next thing. That's, that's technology. And they have done that in other countries, I think, but I don't, that's a little bit, people are a little bit anxious to do that in America. That's pretty cool. And it has a lot of real redundant safety features. People say, well, what if the power goes out? And that's happened several times, actually, and it, everything just freezes. So it's, it's very safe, and there are a lot of, you know, if somebody's walking through the room and trips the power cord and the power goes out, it's just not that big of a deal. It, so it, it, and if there were some type, and, and it's good, let's talk about that for a minute just for our, our folks, our viewers, and anybody that might be about to undergo one of these procedures. Um, a bad storm comes along, power goes out, whatever happens, what do you guys do then? You just, you remove We that remain stuff calm. And Nothing over. really happens. A manual procedure then? Or? I mean, the worst case scenario is we'd have to convert to an open procedure, and we all know how to do that. It's just more invasive and it's harder on the patient. But, you know, the number one goal is to keep people safe, and the second is to do the procedure we're planning on doing. So. If I'm going to take your gallbladder out, you and I would be better off if we do it through small incisions. But when you leave, you're going to not have you're your not gallbladder. Have one way so, or the other. Right. So, so okay. you may have to have a larger incision. Okay. Fantastic. So. We're going to take one more commercial break, and uh, then we'll come back and wrap things up. There are many ways of doing business today. Hello? Call centers, mobile apps. Right away. But when it comes to what really matters, our way is pretty simple to be there when you need us most. That's the quality of your independent agent and the company that stands behind them. Or Insurance in Dublin is your local independent auto owners insurance agency. Welcome back. Dr. Polhill again, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Um, just a few more questions to, to wrap things up. Um, we've got a great team of surgeons here 
at Fairview Park Hospital, and, and we're glad that you're a part of that team. Um, we talked a little bit about the procedures and, and things going on there. How do folks come to know you or, or end up in your operating room? Right, for most surgeons, most people come to us through referrals from their primary care physician. In fact, some in, most insurances require that. Um, and, you know, when, when people do see their primary care physician, they do have a say-so in, in where they're referred. Um, the primary care physician will usually make a recommendation. But just so people know that this is something that is available in our community, you know, for general surgery, colorectal surgery, GYN, as well as ENT, that is it's definitely something to think about. We've got a good uh, support staff here that has done a lot of training to make this possible. Okay. It's, it's not just the physicians or people that, were, that are specially trained to assist us for these procedures. Well, and let me ask you along those lines, um, spend a lot of time here at the hospital interviewing physicians, speaking with, with different people in management. Um, your perspective as part of this team now, um, this, this is an uh, award-winning hospital and, and it, it's a great thing to be able to come here week after week after week and say, hey, let's talk about the, the newest and best award that the hospital has received. How do you feel about being part of the team? Here? I'm, I'm proud to be here. I'm proud of our hospital. Two of my children were born here. Um, if any of them, and one of them has had surgery here three times. So that's, that's a testament to the faith I have in it. Um, and I'm, I'm proud of the people that I work with here. Well, we're glad to have you here. Do um, you have any closing remarks you want to share with our viewers today? Uh, uh, no, we're just excited to have this new tool and um, proud that Fairview has a, you know, one of the cutting, cutting, a, cutting edge technologies for surgery. We're glad to have you. Thank yeah. you for Thank joining you. us on the show. Thank you for joining us. Um, and we want to make sure you know the folks here at Fairview, uh, amazing team here, award-winning hospital. Don't hesitate um, to come and see them here. They'll take good care of you. And we always like to close our show by reminding you that it's a great day for business in Dublin, Lawrence County.
Portions of this program are brought to you in part by Fairview Park Hospital, a leader in health care for Dublin, Lawrence, and surrounding communities. Providing community health care services, including 24-hour emergency room. There are many ways of doing business today. Hello? Call centers, mobile apps. Right away. But when it comes to what really matters, our way is pretty simple. To be there when you need us most. That's the quality of your independent agent and the company that stands behind them. Or Insurance in Dublin is your local independent auto owner's insurance agency.